unto thy land. Thou hast brought back the captivity of Jacob. Thou hast forgiven the iniquity of thy people. Thou hast covered all their sin, Selah. Thou hast taken away all thy wrath. Thou hast turned thyself from the fierceness of thy anger. Turn us, O God of our salvation, and cause thine anger toward uh, us to cease. Wilt thou be angry with us forever? Wilt thou draw out thy anger to all generations? Wilt thou not revive us again that thy people may rejoice in thee? Apostle, will you pray for this message here tonight? And the people say, you may be seated. I love the Psalms because there is so much that you can get out of them. They are written in such a way. They are poetic. They are instructional, inspirational. Uh, they have messages that are underlined within. They are prophetic speakings. And they are very encouraging. When you pray, you pray the Psalms. The Bible says, speaking to yourselves in Psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs. And the word Psalm uh, mean, is Samos. It means uh, to, it's like a hymn or a writing that is accompanied by music. And so when we talk about Psalms, we're talking about hymns. We're talking about poetry, but normally it is accompanied by music. So that leaves other churches out that don't believe you ought to have music in your church. Because the last psalm in the, in the book of Psalms says, make a joyful noise to the Lord. It goes on to tell you to make on the high sounding cymbals and the low sounding cymbals and on the organ and on the drum tell you to shout, tell you to dance. So if it seems strange to you how we worship, we're in the book. The Bible said make a joyful and see noise is for those of us that don't know how to sing good. So we just make noise. And you know one thing the devil don't like, he don't like a lot of noise. And why he don't like noise? Because he used to be a musician and he knows all the chords and he knows music but he hates things that have noise in it because he was, you know, musicians don't like noise. Musicians don't like a chatter. They like things to be in one accord. But it is ironic that even though he don't like noise, he loved to start discord. See, discord is when you off tune. Uh, he loves to get us out of kilter. He loves to get us uh, in disunity with one another. But aren't you glad that uh, it's a wonderful thing when God's people get together? Oh, the Bible said, behold how good, how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. See, when we come together, we create a, a powerful force that begins to, to emanate from this building that caused demons to tremble. The devil don't like it when you lift your voice and shout with the voice of shout, triumph. He don't like it when you forget about yourself and magnify the Lord and worship him. He don't like a whole lot of Lord noise. Psalms 85, is dealing here tonight, the Bible said, Lord, thou hast been favorable unto thy land. You've brought us back from the captivity of Jacob. Thou has forgiven the iniquity of thy people. Thou has covered all of their sin. 
Thou hast taken away all, all thy wrath. And thou hast turned thyself from the fierceness of thine anger. And the question is, why was God angry? Why was God wrathful? Why did he have to cover our sins? And why did he have to forgive our iniquity and bring us back uh, from captivity and bring us back into favor? Well, the children of Israel, if you know the history uh, of the children of Israel, you would know that they was a backsliding nation. They was a nation that God chose to be his people, the apple of his eye. Uh, they were written in the palms of his hand. And he gave beautiful instructions to them through Moses, through uh, the commandments, and told them, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. And went as far as to tell them, uh, that they should have no other God before him. He said, if you then be willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the land. But if you refuse and rebel, you shall be devoured by the sword. And so the children of Israel knew better. You know, isn't it amazing that the folk that always messing up is the folk that know better? It ain't the folk that don't know better. It's the ones that ought to know what they ought to do. Uh, listen, and, and there is, amen, retribution for those that are disobedient to God. And listen, uh, I see here tonight that God has a word for somebody uh, here because, you see, the children of Israel find themselves uh, at the brooks of Babylon in Psalms one. Uh, 37, uh, they began to talk and they said, "We as we sit by the rivers of Babylon, he said, he said, and we hung our harps. Uh, he said, when we remember Zion, they were in captivity. They were in captivity because of their disobedience. And for our attention and our uh, observation, captivity is trials and troubles. We find ourselves in situations and circumstances because we allow the enemy to come and to wreak havoc in our lives. The scripture says that say, some people are taken captive by him at his will. Some people let the devil just come in and run roughshod over them. Just let him come in and have his way. But I'm like Joshua. He said, as for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. He said, if it seem evil to you to serve the Lord, he said, choose ye. He said, but, but I've already made a declaration that I'm going to live for God. And listen, I want to tell you, if you live for God hard, it's easy. If you live for God easy, it's hard. I'm here to tell you that there there's nothing better than living for God. Don't let the devil fool you and make you think you're missing something out there. All he's trying to do is lure you out and set a trap for you. But when I think of the goodness of Jesus and all he's done for me, my soul cries out, hallelujah. Thank God for saving me. The next time the devil knock on your door and telling you you missed something, you better start thinking of the goodness of Jesus. You better think about where he brought you from. You better think Think about that road that you was on, skit road. You better think about all them drugs you used to do, all those situations you used to be, and God turned it around for you. I feel a preaching spirit in here, but let me just slow down here and talk a while. The children of Israel find themselves in captivity. They find themselves being abused and persecuted by the enemy. You know, the worst thing in the world is when you're supposed to be the head and you end up the tail. When you're supposed to be above and now you're beneath. You're supposed to be in, but you're out. You're supposed to be up but you're down. Oh, listen, God never intended for his children to be down. He never intended for us to be defeated. He never intended for us to be second rate or second fiddle to nobody. I'm a child of God. I'm a child of the king. And I've come to the kingdom for such a time as this. You better thank God for your birthright. Thank God for the anointing that's on your life. Thank God for the calling that is on your life. Thank you. Thank God for where he brought you from. The children of Israel now are in reminisce. They are thinking about where they used to be. They said, when I remembered Zion, he said, we, he said, we wept 
by the river. He said, we hung our, our harps. And he said, how shall we sing the Lord's song in a strange land? You know, sometimes God will let you go into a strange land to see where you're still praising. He'll let you go into a strange situation and still see when you bless the Lord at all times and let his praise continually be in your mouth. Some people can't praise God when they're down. Some people can't praise God when they're in trouble. Some folk can't praise God when they got situations and circumstances. But listen, that's the best time to praise him when you get in trouble. For the Bible says he is a very present help in the time of trouble. If you want to know where God is, he's in the trouble. If you want to know where God is, the most of the time you're going through, he's in the, he's a very present help in the time of your trouble. Somebody say, God's in the mess. Yes, he is. I said, God is in the mess because he's a very present help. Now, I'm finna mess with your theology. Most of us believe that when people backslide, that they are furthest away from God. But the truth of the matter is, is when you backslid, that's when you're the most closest to God. Because he said he's married to the backslider. You say these folks, they, they all reprobate and they all this. But honey, at midnight, oh Lord have mercy. There's something that happens at midnight when the drugs wear off, when the alcohol wear off. People begin to think about how good God's been and how they could have died and they could have been sleeping in the grave and they, admit, they get a midnight cry they get a midnight pray and they wake up in the midnight and just say Lord thank you I didn't die this time <laughs> somebody shout hallelujah you see when you get in trouble that's the time to call on it David said, I cried to the Lord and he heard me and he delivered me from all, not some, but all of my fears. I'm not telling you to go get in trouble. I'm not telling you to go and create a problem for yourself. I'm not telling you to get at odds with God, but how many know things sometimes just happen? Sometimes we find ourselves in compromising situations. We find ourselves in a storm. We find ourselves in a valley. We find ourselves in a spirit of darkness sometimes. Sometimes you ain't got to look for trouble. Trouble will come looking for you. Sometimes you ain't got to be doing nothing, just minding your own business and, the, and something will ride up on you. Something will come up against you. But the Bible said when my enemy, even my foes came up against me to eat up my flesh, they stumbled and they fell. Oh listen, you don't have to worry. There's something between you and your heathen enemy called the rock Christ Jesus that won't let you fall and won't let you be defeated. But when I remembered Zion, you know, there are folks that are out there on those streets right now that remember Christian Faith Center. They remember the praise. They remember the worship. They remember, amen, the shouting, the dancing. And listen, and this is why you've been here for 10 years. This is why you're still a beacon of light. This is the reason why these lights come on every service. This is the reason why these organs and drums and these praises are praising because there's a prodigal out there. There's a prodigal son. There's a prodigal daughter. Daughter, your daughter may be out there. Your son might be out there. Amen. Somebody's grandson might be out there. Somebody's husband, somebody's wife is out there. And so we're here uh, sounding the alarm. We're here blowing the trumpet. Why? Because somewhere, some way, God's going to get their attention. God's going to pull them back into the house. God's going to give them one more chance and one more opportunity to get their heart right, to get their soul right. So don't sit there looking in judgment like they ought to know better honey you, you ought to know that in your flesh there dwelleth no good thing and you ought to know that your flesh is weak there's a lot of us if the truth be told we got weak yesterday